Good morning, planty people. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to continue my little series that I have where I talk about like some of the plants that I've bought off of Etsy. I'm going to finish the first, second, and third page. So they're gonna be like my more recent purchases. So I'm gonna finish that today. And then a lot of feedback from the last video was to show if I have those plants today and show like what their current state is. And I couldn't agree more with you guys. I don't know what I was thinking. But yeah, I can't wait to show you guys some more <laughs> cringeworthy slash spendy purchases because in these next few pages, I definitely was a lot more spendy than I previously was. And that's whenever I figured, that's whenever I realized that I actually have a problem and need to like cut it out. But <laughs> go ahead and like and subscribe if you're interested and let's go ahead and just like dive right in. Okay, so I moved my screen a little bit over like in the middle and I adjusted a few things, made my like made myself look a little bit smaller because I realized whenever I watched back that video that you guys couldn't really see a whole lot. And I'm gonna be talking into the mic this time because I also realized that you couldn't really hear me a ton. So we're gonna be projecting ourselves this time. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and jump right into things that I've bought previously. Um, so it looks like I bought some nail vinyls, so who cares about that? I bought a philodendron melanochrysum mid-cutting and I spent $54 on it, including shipping. Now, at the time, I thought that this was just like a good purchase. Little did I know that this was, this was a bad purchase. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell, but like the picture over here, somebody had pointed out, I think it was Brooke pointed out that the picture like looked a little edited too and that was probably a bad sign but I maybe had this cutting a week before it died it just like immediately died um next we have a begonia hot spot four inch pot from my favorite southern oak exotics I don't unfortunately have this plant I spent $19 on it including shipping I really like this one but I'm still trying to figure out begonias guys like if they're not in a terrarium type of environment I'm still trying to figure them out um and woo we spent 90 bucks on this what I thought was a philodendron billetier, but it was actually a philodendron adaba uh, It looks like they have renamed it now because it wasn't originally adaba I know that for a 100% fact because yeah, it wasn't like that. She must have updated the listing to the correct uh, term. And I don't even think that this is an actual adaba I think that this is a hybrid between the two because it looks a little bit it's not the exact same plant. And I will show you guys that plant right now. Here is that philodendron billetier crossed with the adabapuensi. This is definitely a hybrid between the two. So this is what an adabapuensi leaf looks like. There's like no ridges at all in the middle of the leaf as to where like this one is very, very ruffled on the edges. Yeah. So next we have an Echeveria. I don't think I own this plant anymore. Um, I really like really like fuzzy type of succulents. And that's what this guy was. He was a red furry plush succulent for 10 bucks. I thought it was a steal. I'm pretty sure it's dead. Um, and then I have a Begonia Chloristicta green form, which I was really excited about for $47 including shippany shipping <laughs> i got it from bakery botany and this place actually has some pretty good listings usually sometimes they can be a little up there but i thought that this was a good price at the time and i still have this plant and here is some of my green chloristicta i love this begonia i have two cuttings in this terrarium doing really really quite well the mother plant um is unfortunately dead but the, the little guys that are in here are doing great. 
All right. And I think that this was probably my most expensive purchase that I made at this point. And this was from TWP Tropical. And let me just be honest with you guys. These, this, this place, this shop right now is really known for way overcharging for their plants. But I don't know, you know, the effort and work that they put in their plants. Maybe, maybe the retail price is, <laughs> maybe, maybe they can justify it. Maybe they put a ton of hard work into their plants and that makes sense to them. But a lot of their plants are like ridiculously overpriced in my opinion. But you know, price things however you want it. However you think it should be priced, whatever. <laughs> that's my two cents. Welcome to my TED talk. And that's the end of my TED talk. But anyway, I thought $124 was a really good price. I really wanted a darker leaved dude and this one was a pretty uh, big one and this was this plant was a gift to myself for finally getting monetized on youtube so for finally reaching 1000 subscribers i was really excited about that and i i have you guys to thank for it i really appreciate you guys for supporting me and watching my content and this is what this plant looks like right now all right and here is our anthurium crystallinum with a, one really sad leaf, but a really nice leaf right here. And some new growth on the way over there, if you guys can see. But yeah, this this guy, or in a lot of my plants in here that I'm about to talk about, have really undergo, undergone a lot of rip damage. So we're just trying to recover from that. Next up is an Oncidia, Oncidium, I don't think that I'm I'm pretty positive that I've killed this plant. Yeah, so I do not have this Oncidium anymore. This was probably one of my first ever like more exciting and exotic uh, orchid purchases and I killed it pretty immediately. Not horribly immediately, but pretty immediately. Um, next I have a, ooh, this one is, there's some tea with this one. So, there was a painted lady cutting that was a huge cutting like she was big and it was an unrooted cutting and i thought it was a really great price forty dollars for that plus a middle cutting of a variegated hoya carii and there was some messages like let's look let's look and see what's going on because she reached out to me and we had to talk back and forth because she ended up the original cutting that she was selling me, something ended up going wrong with it. She like broke it, dog broke it, something happened to it. And she wanted to offer me a, the like the bottom half of the plant, which was fully rooted. Like there were a ton of roots on it, but it was just one leaf. And I was like, you know what? This, this could be a great experience because it's fully rooted. And I was, I was more than happy to switch and take that instead of the cutting, even though it had, you know, several leaves. But the cutting did not make it. But let's go ahead and look at my review of Maggie's free time. And I don't think the shop is up and running anymore. Maggie was so beyond kind and helpful to me. She was open about accidentally damaging the product. Like I told you guys, she damaged it but she was very open about it and that's what really matters. And offering me something of equal value, plus I love that she used Halloween packaging, so cute, and I recommend. Thank you, Maggie, for great pricing, customer service, and packaging. Like, she was great, like, don't get me wrong, she was absolutely phenomenal with her customer service, but it's a red flag if something like this happens, guys. Like, don't. If something like this happens to you guys, and you continue and you just like, yeah, I'll take whatever the other option is. I just wouldn't do it because this has happened to me like so many times now where, not so many times, probably like two or three times where something has happened to the original plant and then they've substituted it with something else and it just didn't work out. Um, could be me and my lack of experience with philodendrons at the time because this was last year in October when I was really trying to dabble into, into Octobers, into uh, philodendrons. 
But I would just like, if something like this happens, I would really think about it before you jump in and decide, yeah, this was, this is a great substitution because I don't know, it didn't work out for me. Plus she ended up having to refund me for the carry eye variegated cutting. Like it just wasn't a great experience, but it was also a good experience at the exact, at the exact same time. Um, and then my first <laughs> Botanica's uh, Begonia Darthidariana. This Darth is absolutely stunning. Oh, I'm not even show you guys my screen. <laughs> this Darth is absolutely stunning. You could never, you never could have looked at this plant and known it was a rescue rooted cutting because it's so beautiful and healthy. I thought this was a great plant. I didn't give it the love and care that it needed and it died. Wow, I'm not gonna get to show you guys a ton of plants. <laughs> All right, now we finally have a plant that I still have alive. And look at that price, $165. What was I thinking? Wow, I would not pay that price today. I was so excited about anthuriums at one point. I was just like willing to spend a lot of money on them. I would not do this today, especially because you could probably get them for a lot better price and trade for them. Trade, trade for your plants, guys. It's so much cheaper, so worth it. You get to make friends in the process. Just trade for your plants. Don't spend $165 on a plant. Anyway, I still have this plant and I'll show you guys that now. Here is what my Magnificum looks like. <laughs> this is just a baby leaf that had a ton of thrips that, um, like showed itself on it whenever it was unraveling and I had to chop off the other leaves because they were very very yellow and sad. Okay so next up I have two orchids that are not with us today. They got this was I think during the like shipping really like shipping delaying period and these were both in the mail for a really, really long time. I bought this Pleurothallis with um, Ashley and we bought it as like a like a twin type of gift. I thought it would be so cool. We thought it would be cool to have like sister plants. And it spent for, I think, a couple of weeks in the mail and it was just bad packaging. It was just a bad experience overall. Um, and then I bought a, from Botanica, a Philodendron Melanochrysum varicosum hybrid so this is going to be a splendid um i don't i know i have this plant i actually don't have this plant anymore i actually traded it well i took several cuttings off of it and i sold those and then i did a trade with one of my friends for it and but yeah it's still doing good as far as i know it didn't die i didn't kill it i traded it for another plant because I, you'll see in a second, got another Splendid. Um, and then we have another orchid that I killed because I don't know how to take care of plants. <gasps> I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't realize I spent $119 on that Splendid. You guys can't see it, but like, wow, I don't remember spending that much. Don't spend that much. Trade for it. <laughs> but I killed this. I had it in my Ikea cabinet for a while and it just, like, I think it put out one leaf for me and that was it. It just died. And then I bought this really pretty large philodendron melanochrysum. <laughs> this is what it looks like now. So this is what my melanochrysum looks like now. Cut her all the way down. This is a bunch of regrowth and some of her little sisters are right down here doing quite well this is what she looks like now and yeah it's 210 dollars what why i spent 210 dollars on this and i think this is whenever i first um learned about Klarna and I just thought that that would be a really easy idea because it breaks it down into like four payments and it seems really manageable. But this was another situation where I uh, 
got reached out like I got messaged by the seller and she had told me that some of the bottom leaves had started to yellow and follow off fall off and I cannot express to you guys enough if something like this happens do not buy the plant something is probably going on with it do not buy it at least that's just me that's my recommendation to you do what you think is best <laughs> But yeah, she's all cut up now, but I think she's doing decent. So this is some Hoyas that I purchased from The Plant Nurse. And I'm sure that if you guys like Hoyas and you like shopping on Etsy for plants, you've probably heard of The Plant Nurse. Some of her Hoyas are a little, you know, a little pricey. But this was whenever I first discovered Hoya Sulawesi. And that was because of... Oh, what is her name? So I had to look it up, but it was BB Plants. I was really obsessed with her channel and her content, her LECA content specifically at the time. And she, I think, hauled this plant. I'd never fallen in love with a plant so hard in quite a long time. And so I was like on a mission to get this Hoya. And that's what I did. And I got a Hoya Larissa splash in this in the process. And these that's this is what those two plants look like now. And right here is my Hoya Sulawesi. It's growing one, two, three new leaves since I've gotten it. And actually it had more, but I took a cutting right there and it shot out this nice new growth. I absolutely love this plant. I just think it's so stunning and it's so thick and hard and I love the little divots in it. I just think it's a really cool Hoya. This is my Hoya Larissa, sun stressing beautifully. I would pull her up out and show you guys, but she's got a lot of her roots down into the perlite, so I'm just gonna leave her be. But yeah, she's a very slow grower, but the new growth that comes in just looks absolutely miraculous. I just love this little turtle shell. Anthurium forgetii from Houseplant Ladies. Just wow. The owner sent me pictures as the plant was being packaged and even refunded me the price of a heat pack because I looked at the weather and felt that I didn't need one. Just awesome. Really. Highly recommend this shop those skills though yeah i spent 174 dollars on this dude klarna why do you exist and make me make bad decisions obviously nobody made me make these decisions i make my own bad financial decisions all on my own and i've worked on it a whole lot i'm doing so much better now but at the time this seemed like such a good price and it was a huge plant, great customer service, and I still have this plant today. Here is my Forgetti Eye. She's only got one leaf at the moment. Also suffered from thrips while she was while this leaf was growing in. I don't think it's completely hardened yet because there's still like a you can see this color right here. I think it's supposed to be completely dark green before it's uh one hundred percent done growing and hardening off. But yeah, it's just this one leaf and it's got, or actually it's two leaves. I don't know how I missed that. <laughs> but yeah, and it's got another one on the way right there. All right. And now we have our second Philodendron Splendid, which I still have today. But she looks like this. And this is what my Splendid looks like now. I chopped her all up. There's some other wet sticks in here. But this is what she looks like now. She's putting out some beautiful, beautiful new little leaves. They're not as big as they once were, but I mean, it is what it is to be expected whenever you chop them down all the way to the node like that. And I spent $174.50 on her. It had, I think, a little bit of roots because I reached out to the seller and I was really interested in if the plant was rooted or unrooted and she you know went in through the moss and saw a tiny bit of roots but there wasn't a whole lot but i specifically wanted a plant that had bigger foliage that's what i was after and i was willing to pay the price for it obviously <laughs> and i still have this plant. and ooh, this is a big big spender like i hope nobody judges me for this but i spent 305 on this plant Do I regret it? Kind of. I still love this plant. I still have this plant. 
but I definitely regret spending 305 on a plant. But I still have this plant. Um, it was really unfortunate because I had to, I got refunded like 50 bucks from this because the packaging ended up not being the greatest. The plant ended up like two of the leaves ended up getting ripped and one of them was like had some unfortunate damage to it that wasn't pictured. So I got 50 bucks refunded to me for it, but I don't know, like I should have just sent it back. Because as soon as I got it, I had a bad experience from it. It didn't give me the tingles that I was looking for with this philodendron El Chaco Red. Like, because this was a wishlist plant for a really long time. And I should have just sent it back and got my refund. Like, a complete refund. Because it wasn't, wasn't what I was wanting or what I signed up for. And here is my El Chaco and how she's doing. Got three leaves. This one isn't the best leaf, but it's... Unfortunately, the newest, newest-ish leaf. Yeah, this plant has uh, like, um, there's been a few thrips to throw up, throw up, <laughs> to show up on this plant, but not very many. And as soon as I see them, I treat it immediately. And yeah, it doesn't seem like it's suffered too, too much from thrips in general, if anything, this newest leaf has. But yeah, for the most part, she's doing really quite well. Got a new growth point coming in right there. And then I have one of these, uh, I think people call them pings, and I killed this plant. I put it in my Ikea cabinet thinking that it would help me with my fungus gnats, but I killed it pretty quickly. All right, last and final page. This is a Hoya Bella Albo Marginata. I spent $112 on it. I thought it was a great price, and I still have it. Here is my Hoya Bella Albo Marginated version. It's definitely not looking giant, but it's because I've taken two rounds of cuttings from it. This is some cuttings from the main plant, which is that guy. And I just love, love, love Hoya Bella. I really want to get the inner variegated version of this plant, but it's doing really well. Next. So this is the most expensive plant I've ever bought. And this is a Variegated Monstera Albo from Variegata 777. I spent $314 on this plant. And if you've seen any of my videos on this plant, you know how I feel about it. So this is what's remaining of my beautiful Albo. It looks like absolute garbage. I'm actually really surprised that this guy hasn't like completely yelled off and like shriveled off and died. I mean, he's definitely like shriveling and there aren't any roots or anything like that, but I'm just gonna leave him in this thing of sphagnum moss just in case he decides to pull through and it would be like a miraculous type of thing, let me tell you. Yeah, this is what he looks like right now. He looks like absolute crap. <laughs> but I think I just got like super like sucked up in the hype of this plant and just like this store in general and I was expecting just beautiful things to come of it and it just I don't know it's really unfortunate what happened but yeah this plant suffered a lot of root rot sorry I don't have a, I can't really um articulate very well because I'm just really upset about this plant purchase and my past self but we're making better decisions today and that's all that really matters yeah I thought it was beautiful highly recommend the seller and his plants um bought some masks and then I bought a Begonia Frida and a Begonia Masonia Iron Cross. And this is what they look like now. This is my Begonia Frida. She's doing really, really great. I've cut her a ton of times because she takes up a lot of room in this terrarium. That's why she's only one leaf right now. Here is this Begonia, this little dude. He's doing good. Got some sad leaves at the bottom. We're not talking about you. But yeah, she does really good. I'm, I like the little, the little hairs on her. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah, it's pretty cool little dude. Then I bought this really like affordable bundle for the Philodendron Campo and the Begonia Julau. I specifically wanted a Begonia Julau because I loved the way that Chloe from Planted in Provo's uh, like little terrarium turned out. I thought it was so cute. And that's also a reason why I bought the Frida. I bought them all kind of close to close-ish together because I wanted to have like a little terrarium 
um, that I built for them. And yeah, this is what they look like now. This is what my Campo looks like right this minute. She's actually really quite thirsty, so I'm going to give her a water after this. But this just isn't one of like my favorite plants at the end of the day. I don't love her like I thought I might. Like I said, I, I essentially got this because it was in a really, really affordable bundle with that Jilau and I'm going to try and not do that from now on, especially when it's plants that I'm not sure if I'm actually going to like or not. And this is my Jilau. It's one little baby leaf just trying to stick it through right there. But the Frida just took up so much space in that terrarium, unfortunately. A lot of my little begonias in there suffered. but. It looks like she's still trying to hang in there with that one little tiny baby leaf. All right, we're coming to the end, people. We are coming to the end. And first up, we have a orchid bulbophyllum. I still have this guy and I'm so happy about it, but she's not growing a ton for me yet. So I'm just trying to like, I'm trying to figure my orchids out. I really love orchids. I love the idea of orchids, but I'm just, I'm still trying to figure them out. And here is my little bulbophyllum that I love so much that I got from Ritter. Not a whole lot is happening, but there was like some little serpents cutting in there that's doing, <laughs> doing the most, if you can tell, if you can tell. But yeah, there's not a whole lot to report back on this guy's not, oh, is that, kind of looks like a new leaf, kind of doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, she's still, she's still alive. She's still having a good time, it looks like. And then I got a Begonia teratiformis. I was so, I was so pissed about this plant whenever I unboxed it. It was ridiculous. Let me read to you what I left the review as. So, this is what I said. I received a Begonia teratiformis and she was really sad upon arrival. I immediately reached out to the seller and was communicated with that day. I did my best to make sure the plant had a great and humid environment, but alas, it didn't make it. The seller completely refunded me and for that, I'm truly grateful. This would be a five-star review. However, I feel like begonias like this should be shipped in more of a Tupperware enclosed type of environment, but that's just my own personal preference. Customer service is five stars though. I mean, Customer service was great, but the begonia, this is a terrarium type of begonia and it needs humid. It needs a humid environment. And she packaged it up like it was a freaking aeroid and it was just like flopping around in a little packaging that it had. And it just like literally, I opened it up and it literally looked like dead lettuce like all the leaves were browning except for like maybe two i put them in my little terrarium that i had my julau and my other little begonias in and it just didn't make it it died within like a few days and i was really really pissed off about it because whenever i was messaging the owner at the beginning it kind of sounded like she was going to try really hard to get out of refunding it but i'm glad that she finally refunded me and then I bought a wow look at the price difference I bought a another begonia teratiformis almost a month later like 20 days later and it was for half the price and I had a much better experience and I said for our terrarium begonia the packaging was absolutely great she looks good and sturdy thank you and that's just like this person was shipping from California half the price and this person was shipping from freaking Florida where I live and what how is somebody from California gonna ship better than somebody that lives literally near me but whatever <laughs> I'm just glad that I got refunded and then I found my wishless plant at a much cheaper cost and I got a better version of it and this is what it looks like now here is my begonia teratiformis it's looking a little sad, but like I said earlier, um, the Frida was taking up a lot, a lot of room and it was squishing this plant. So I cut her all the way back and she's doing so much better now. But I love, 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 love this begonia. I think it's so cool and spotted and unique looking. Yeah, she's doing, she's doing good. Okay guys, so we have two plants left. And both of them are orchids. I bought a Paphiopetalum 
L- Lindley Kupowitz. Uh, yeah. I'm, I really love this plant. I think it's so cool. It was $42, which I think was a really good price for the type of path that it is. Here she is. Here is my Pepheopetalum. Not a ton of new things happening here, but she still looks good. She still looks like she's alive and living, and we love that. This leaf has uh, like arrived to me like half broken, so... I'm not really surprised that it's finally yellowing. And lastly, but certainly not least, is going to be another orchid, Okio Clades Monophylla Jewel Orchid Live. I, pfft, that's a lot of words to me. A super gorgeous plant, bigger than I expected to. A Ritter never disappoints. I truly recommend Ritter orchids for all of your orchid needs. I love that store on Etsy. I really love Ritter orchids. I always had really great experiences from them and so have a lot of my friends around me who have ordered from Ritter themselves. Here we have the orchid and this orchid has put me through the ringer. It keeps coming up with mealybugs randomly but I still love it. I think it's really cool. I love the pink on it and I just love the the coloration the way that the leaves look. If you can see right there I've like rubbed it really hard and taken off some of the color from where there was mealy bugs on it. Yeah, I, I really like this plant. I don't really know a ton of the, um, on like its care, but I just think it's such a cool little dude. Uh, I hoped uh, this wasn't too like cringy for some of you guys to see how many plants that I've killed. Maybe, maybe it's relatable. Maybe you can relate to buying several plants and killing most of them because it took me a long time to start to start being not responsible but like a better caretaker to my plants and I finally have like a ton of plants that I just really like and really love and care about and ones that I'm just actually going to stick with and keep up with and I'm sure you guys can relate to that too. I had so much fun filming this video and this little series. Let me know if you want me to show you guys my eBay purchases. I definitely don't have as many on there. It'd probably be just one more episode, but let me know in the comments down below if you would like for me to show you my eBay purchases and I can show you if the plants are alive or if they have also killed over. <laughs> But I appreciate you guys for watching and supporting. I will see you guys next time. Let me know if you like the vibe of the last couple of videos because I have really enjoyed filming these and it just like makes me feel relaxed and I've had so much fun. I've laughed more in the last couple of videos than I have in a while. So let me know in the comments down below if you've enjoyed my most recent videos as well. But yeah, see you later guys. <laughs> Bye.